stop you on that. No recording yet. Nice for the people that are here. You guys have uh, questions? I see a couple people unmuting. Are you guys, you have questions? What's up? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask a question. There's one problem in section 5.2. It's asking like, what is the, what was the exact question that it asks? What is the least possible degree for the function? And for yeah. most of them, like the way I was doing it is there's generally the rule of, you know, the amount of turning points it has. One more than that is the degree, right? Yes. But one of them, like it's got two turning points. So I would assume it would be the third degree, but then it also has uh, two asymptotes, like vertical asymptotes. Would that change that at all? Uh, 42 on 5.2. Do, 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 do. Oh, so yeah. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So this question asks, is it possibly a polynomial function? If so, determine the number of turning points and the least possible degree. So the way I'm saying that is a big, maybe the first part of the question is a no. Because oh, what okay. is it? What is it that makes something polynomial? This it has an infinite domain. Yeah, right. yeah. In 42, yeah, okay. Walls. It's got walls set up. So, yeah. There are things I'm not allowed to input. It's not polynomial then. Yeah. We'll find out later that looks like it might be one cycle of a trigonometric a, a, a tangent function, possibly. But uh, who knows? Could be anything. Um, anybody else have any questions? I got a couple more people. Are we past the halfway? Yes, we're past the halfway point. Celebrate small victories. Any other questions? No. Okay, so maybe I'll do this. This might help. I had put this up here. Maybe I'll, oh, I'll awaken this thing. I put something on Canvas that I haven't. Oh, here we go. I just got it. All right, so maybe I'll do this in a minute. I got a question from the homework. Section 5.1, number 15. All right, let me see. Let me share this here in a minute. More people are showing up. All right. Uh, let's see. Can you guys see my book? All right. So this one says, determine whether there's a min or max value, find the value in the axis of symmetry. So this is all about the shortcut that we talked about, right? Um, so help me out. How can I tell if there's a min or a max? What am I looking at to determine that? A, whether it's positive or negative. Yeah, yeah. if it opens down, there's obviously gonna be a top of the mountain, it's gonna be a max. If it opens up, there's obviously gonna be a valley, it's gonna be a min. So you can very quickly scroll down and see which ones are gonna have maxes, which one's gonna have mins, so 15 has got a positive, so you can figure that out. Um, and then it says, find that value and the axis of symmetry. So if I find the vertex, I basically found the value and the axis of symmetry, right? Now that's probably not enough for the person that asked the question because, so what was the, so let me, let me see, let me do this. Sorry, I got to change things around. Let me spotlight my video. Ah. All right, and now I got to change this over here. Old teacher teaching, just give me a minute. While I remember how to use my technology. Okay, so now I can do this. Let me share this, bam. Let me make it so you can't annotate too, so I don't get any weird little pictures up there from students. And it's not working. Oh, yeah. And then let me. God, Jeff. That's amazing. There we go. Now it's working. All right. So here's 15. Um, but what was the shortcut to finding the vertex? 
How do we find the X piece of the vertex? What's the shortcut? X equals negative B over 2A. Negative B over 2A. I love it. That's the X piece. And what I just wrote, if it is, uh, well, what I just wrote is the equation of the axis of symmetry because the axis of symmetry runs right through the vertex. It's gonna have an X equals equation because it's right now still vertical. We're not talking about collapsed parabolas, ah. right? We're talking about, they're still standing. Um, and then the, the value is just gonna be the output. So once you find the full vertex, you have basically answered the last part of this. So the the, Min max is easy. Just see, is A positive or negative? You guys with me? So if A is negative, so this one, is this one going to have a max or a min? Max. Why a max? Because it's like a downwards parabola. Yeah, it opens down, so there's going to be a top of the hill. I love it. Is that all right? Person who asked that question, can you send me another message. It's okay if it's not all right. I can, I can discuss it more. Okay. All right. If after one explanation, it still doesn't make sense, don't hesitate to say, I still don't understand. That's fine. I won't go insane. So many other things could have driven me insane. So I might be immune. I don't want to say that. Don't take that as a challenge. Um, okay. Anything else from homework before I, I move on? Okay. Oh, somebody just now, let me see, chatted at me. 49 in 5 1. All right, let me clear this stuff. 49. Jihad. Let me see, what's this say? Use the table of values that represent points on the graph of a quadratic function by determining the vertex and axis of symmetry. Find the general form, blah, 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 blah. All right, so look at 49. Can you guys see the, where the vertex is? What's gonna happen around the vertex? So one I don't know. Gonna go is, up, one side's gonna go down. I mean, they're gonna go in opposite directions, either side of the vortex, right? Yeah, so let's take a look at this. I, I kind of always hate it when they put a table this way. I like it better when it's up and down, but I don't know if you guys have a preference either way. But look what's happening. As the x's increase here, the y's increase also. x increases, y increases, x increases, y increases, x increases, y. Oh. <laughs> right? And, and do you see how isn't, aren't the outputs symmetric around this point? So that must be the vertex, the vertex. right there. So the, isn't that the highest Y output it gets to before it starts to go back down? Now, the reason, now, if this was just a table of values in the wild, I have no freaking clue what the, the, I mean, the function could be almost anything. It's the fact that they told me that this is quadratic that I know when I see that, that must be the vertex because that's what it's going to do. It's going to go up to it. But, so obviously, either down to it and back up or up to it and back down. So I know it came up to it and back down. So I know that it opens down. Are you guys, everybody with me so far? Okay. And now I've already forgotten what it asked me to do. It wanted me to, <laughs> hold on. Let me see, can I show the instructions and the problem? Almost. Uh, yeah, okay, so once the vertex, so we got the vertex and the axis is symmetry, that's easy. Uh, so we have the vertex. I don't wanna do this whole problem for you, but here is the, what is the form of a quadratic that's useful here for this problem? What's the form of the, of the equation for a quadratic that's useful here? Standard form. Know? Yes. So it's become a thing. 
So we talked about this already a few times. You can see the vertex when it's in this form. Um, so we know the vertex is one, one. We identified that. We have several points we could use to help us figure this out. Uh, the axis of symmetry is kind of silly. We know it's x equals one, whoop de doo Is that help? Is that further along than you got person that was chatting to me? Does that help? Oh, you did all of that. Okay, this is the point where I always get concerned. Okay, so now what you can do, one thing you can do, it goes through the point zero, zero, which always kicks ass. Because the only thing I don't know is A, right? The only thing I don't know right now is A. I know what H and K are, right? H and K. And I know a point that it goes through is zero, zero. So I can put all that information in. So the only thing I won't know is A, is, is what I'm saying right now making sense? Yes, yeah. you can plug that in for X and Y. You can plug that in for H and K, right? And then the only thing you don't know is A. Is that all right? Okay, okay. I got confirmation for my question asker. That's what I needed. All right. Anybody other questions? And what's interesting is there's another problem later in this section that basically has the same um, work that you have to do. It's just given to you in a different form. So you'll see that. So if this makes sense, then the later stuff should also make sense. Okay. Anything else, guys, before I move on? I live off of questions and you live off of answers. It's amazing. It's almost symbiotic, the relationship. Feed me. Okay, all right, I'll, I'll survive. Um, you stop sharing. Stop looking at my book. So what I wanna do is let me activate this sheet. All right, let me move you guys back over there. Let me get this back open. Where are you? Oh, you're over there. All right, I, I, let me ask your forgiveness for this afternoon. I am exceptionally tired. I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Uh, I had a late meeting last night with some, I'm involved in like city stuff, trying to figure out what city council stuff. That was exciting. Anyway, you don't have to know all that shit. So if I start to become incoherent, you gotta let me know. All right, you're like, dude, it's been every night you're being incoherent, shit. All right, um, so let me make this active. Here we go. So if you have access to um, Canvas, if you go to the modules under unit uh, five, you should see a function writing um, uh, paper, function writing handout. So let me, I'm going to pull that up. So let me just show you real quick where that is. So if you go to modules, there is now a unit five. Unit four was so tiny, it didn't get its own little thing. Poor little, poor little dude. Don't make fun of him. If you go to function writing, you'll see the sheet that I want to work on right now. I'm going to pull it up in a different form so I can actually write on the damn thing. So hopefully most of you guys are able to access that. Let me stop sharing and let me pull it up in a different way. Okay. Where are you? Oh, all right. So exciting. There we go. There we go. Let me pull you over there. So let me share this just in case you can't access Canvas. And this is going to be a general plea. None of you have to do this, but if anyone can turn on their camera, anybody else, that'd be great. You don't have to. It just 
makes me main, retain a little bit of my sanity. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. You start talking these little boxes of names in it, and you just have to go a little insane. So I appreciate being able to see people. Um, can you guys see the function writing practice sheet? Did I share the right thing? Okay. So let's look at this. Um, I kind of want you guys to do what you can with the first one. And, and the person that was talking about the last few problems in section, I think it's 5.1, this hopefully will help. That's the intent behind this handout. Um, I got to get a haircut. Jesus. So this should sound a little familiar. Uh, 40 feet of fencing, rectangular space. Okay, cool. So I can draw all that. And I want to know the area as a function of width. So what's, so this is kind of the next level of word problems, but it's not harder. It's just, you're gonna, we're gonna do a little more with stuff. Uh, and I understand that most people hate word problems. I understand that, <laughs> but it's so freaking important. It really is just translating between English and mathish. It, it's, it's, that's what it is. And that's why it's hard. Um, so we get to create something. What is missing that I need so I can even do anything with the information they give me? What do I need to identify here? The length and width. Yeah, yeah, I've got to give myself variables to work with. And the variables have to relate to the information they give me. In fact, let me, let me just do this. What do they tell me? What information do they just tell me? Is they it just tell the area? me. No, that's what they're asking me for, isn't it? So they ask it. me. I got somebody chatting. I can't handle every technology. Okay, good. Thank you. Athena's got it. So they tell me the perimeter is 40 feet. They just tell me. I know that for sure. There's no unknown there. I know the perimeter is 40. That's fantastic. It feels good to know something. And then they ask me for the area. So I need variables that relate to both of those. So I, of course I need the width become a W. There you go, buddy. And the length, let me just complete it all the way. So how do I write this better? How do I write this idea better using the variables I created? N no. Almost. It's two width plus two length. Plus, good. So pruner is all about adding all the sides. So I have a couple sides that are W and a couple sides that are L and all together it's got to make 40. Now, what's the formula for what they ask me? So I love putting it this way. Uh, if any of you are gonna take calculus, if I was teaching it, I would continue this tell me, ask me, because it really focuses your brain on, let me work on the tell me, and then let me work on the ask me, and then I'm gonna see how they can work together. So they asked me for the area, of course, what's the area formula for this? Length times width. Holy shit, good, right? I like it. Now, how can I work with these two things together? I, what really, really sucks about this is that I can't draw an L, but also it's the fact that there's too many variables. The number of variables in that equation is too damn high. So what can I do? I know this is true. This much is true. So how can I use what I know, what I'm told, to help me with what I'm asked? What is this currently? Area is currently a function of what? What is area currently a function of? Mm -hmm. Length and width. Length and width. And I want area as a function of width alone. So what letter do I want to not have here anymore? The L. The L, okay, let's stop. Just, just take that in. Do you understand? That's the thought process. That is the thought process right now is I got too many damn letters in the ask me. I want to get rid of the L, which means I want to replace the L. So what do I do with this equation? Solve, Solve it for L. L. 
If I solve this equation for L and put what I get here, won't there just be W's? That's the, that, there you go, that's it. So if I solve this for, I can, I can cut everything in half right away, right? That'll make this a lot easier. And then I just have to subtract W. Woohoo! So now I get area is length times width. So let me, let me, I got to come down here a little bit. Area then, let me see if you guys are cool with what I'm about to do. It's negative W squared plus 20W. Now I'm going to take this a little further than my sheet says to go, just so I match up with what they want you to do in the homework. It's, it's, does anyone have a question about what the hell just happened? So the, the thing they ask me about has too many variables. They have to give me some information so I can then replace one of the variables with the other one, a function of the other one. Now, let me go one step further. How do I find the maximum area of this kind of a rectangle? That's not a question up here, but let me just go one step further. You would solve for the vertex? Yeah, why would I expect there to be a maximum? Because, of course, this is a... Negative. Uh, a is less than negative. zero. That's right. So that means that this parabola opens... Downwards. Downwards. So I expect a maximum then, right? So if I... What's the shortcut? Now, I don't have an x here, right? So what's my negative b over 2a equal to? W. Is that cool? Let me stop. I, I really want you guys with me. There's nothing special about X. Nothing special. X needs to get over itself, right? It sounds like it's a, 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 a psycho psychological thing. My X has to get over itself. But the X doesn't mean anything special. Here, what's acting like X? W. So how, what's the shortcut for finding the vertex? Negative B over 2A. What's B? Uh, B negative 20. Yep. Yeah. Use 20, and then what's A? Uh, it'd be negative two. Negative two. All right, is everybody doing okay? You guys all right? You gotta, the minute I lose you, you gotta ask a question. So I'm hoping, I'm being an optimistic fool and just saying I haven't lost anybody at all. Everybody is with me. Isn't A negative one? Yeah, it is negative one. I think you meant like, yeah, I just wrote that down just because I'm so agreeable. So A is negative one, <laughs> and then it becomes negative two on the bottom. So what do you get for W? Negative or positive 10. Good. So of course, what's the length then? Ten. Ten. So what kind of shape is this really? Square. Cube. Not a cube, it's only two dimensional. Square. Square. In fact, Stay with me now. If, if I have all four sides and nothing else happening, a square will always maximize the area. Let's do some concrete shit. Let me put some stuff over here that I'm going to erase in a minute. So here's 10, 10. What's that area? All right, it's 100. I'm not going to stay here away. So if I make a, a rectangle that has 40 feet, so let's say if I made this 8, eight, what would these have to be so it still has 40 feet? Five. No. 12. 12. So what's this area? Ninety-six. Ninety-six. Yeah, isn't that less than that? Right? So, so a square will always maximize your area as far as a rectangle with only four sides. Have any of you ever run across a problem that said uh, the farmer built a pen next to a river? So there isn't that last side? That kind of thing? No? Does that sound familiar to anybody? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we'll try that problem in a minute. All right. 
let me let me erase some of this stuff. How do I do that again? Oh yeah, there we go. All right, I'm gonna take this away. So this is just some concrete stuff. Oh, I can't take it away. Well, that's different. I wrote in indelible ink. I didn't even know I could do that. Why can't I take that away? <laughs> that just makes sense. Oh, it's because it's up here, Jeff. I wasn't, oh, Jeff, you are on the ball. You are on the ball, dude. I really hope you guys can forgive me. Get in there. There we go. Go away. Okay. All right. So maybe we'll do that problem in a minute. I want to look at this problem now because this is kind of the reverse of that. Do, let's see if you guys understand this. You have 40 feet of fencing. Same thing as the first one, an enclosed rectangular space with a part of the fence running down the center. So now my shape is going to look like this. So I'm going to put maybe some... Uh, you know, orcs over here and some hobbits over there, right? <laughs> A little pin for my orcs and hobbits. So how does that change anything? Let me take those away so you don't think there's some extra variables. Um, so I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did up here, right? But now I'm going to, if I put a W there and an L there, then this is still L, but what else is W? That means this is W and that's W. So perimeter isn't really what I'm using here because I have to put some of the fencing all the way around plus this one. So now what's, what's, uh, what do they tell me now? They tell me that I'm going to use 40 feet of fencing. But where, what's it got to go to? It's got to go to how many L's, two L's, and how many W's? Three. Three. So the fencing has to go here and here, two L. Here and here and here, three W. Okay, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Okay. And now my the ask me is actually still the exact same formula. You guys see that? Don't freak out. I don't have to do like, what's the formula for the whole area of this thing, L times W. Now I have a special place in my heart for the student that says, you lose some of the area because of this middle fence. I'm like, you do, you're right. You can put that in your formula if you want to, but we're going to assume it's. <laughs> so there's a really good point in there. Uh, when you first learn math, you start with hyper simplified situations. It has, if anybody's um, has to take physics, you're going to do some problems with like massless ropes and frictionless tables right? You can't buy a massless rope. You can't buy a frictionless table, thankfully, because then nothing, you know, put it down. Whoa, shit. Um, but we start with that. And then as you learn more mathematics, you can start to put more variables in that represent these other things. So we are going to ignore the width of that fence. We're not going to take away from the area. All right. Hopefully you guys are with me. So they still ask me the same thing. It's still length times width. That doesn't change. So now, what variable do I want to get rid of again here? Of course, I want to get rid of L. So I do the same thing. But this is going to be a little more disgusting, right? What do you get when you solve this for L? It's going to be just a tad more gross. Three uh, twenty minus three over two W. Do it again, sorry. I don't know if you're solving for L. It'd be twenty minus three over two W. I like it. So you can get yeah. So if you subtract three W, divide by two, you get twenty minus three W over two, or you get forty minus three W all over two. I love it. Kick ass. And then you throw that in the same way we did up here. We we took what they told us and we threw it into what they asked us. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So now the area, can you guys still see that at the bottom? Yeah. I hope so. Oh, good. I think I can move this though, can't I? Yes, oh, good. Um, times W. And so you get area is uh, negative three W squared over two plus 
W. So if I wanted to find the maximum area, I would still do the same thing. It's just that my A is a little bit more disgusting, right? Why don't you guys go ahead and do that? Find the vertex for this. Let me make sure that's a two. One nice thing about this is this step is nice. Thank you. And then the next step is not so nice, but that's just too bad. Become a 20. Everybody cool out there? You guys all right? Yeah. So then what's the length? Mm. Did it come out to 10? Yes, it's really kind of nice. This, this really reduces nicely here, right? So you get 20 minus 10, you get length is 10. Now, now real quick, let me see if you guys get this. The answer we got up here was a, was a square 10 by 10, right? So let me ask you this real quick, real quick. What's the total in the y direction 20? Do you guys see that? And what's the total in the x direction 20? Now look at here, look at here kids. This is 10, this is 10. Let me make this complete. This is feet. This is 20 thirds feet. This is 20 thirds feet. And this is 20 thirds feet. What's the total in the X direction? 20. What's the total in the Y direction? 20 thirds, 20 thirds, 20 thirds. 20. Just 20. 20. There's something very interesting in that. <laughs> and that's all I'll say about it. It's just a little side note. It's interesting. Okay. So in order to have that fence down the middle, it just had to kind of squeeze together a little bit to make the maximum area still happen. All right, let me stop for a minute. So the one thing that's different with these kind of word problems is there's these two fundamental things you have to do at the beginning. What do they tell me and what's the formula that goes with what they tell me? What do they ask me and what's the formula that goes with what they ask me? To me, that's the best way I've discovered to look at these kind of problems, to really focus on what you got to do. All right. You guys got all that stuff, that chicken scratch? Now look at the third one. This one, all right. Well, that's fantastic. Square base, height of H. Can somebody tell me what physically is that related to? That is related to the what of this? Surface area. Surface area, kick ass. They tell me the surface area is a thousand square feet. And what do they ask me about? Become a letter, there we go. Pen, you will do what I say. There. What do they ask me for? The volume. Yeah, and what's the volume from this? L times X times X. Oh, this is an H, sorry. 
Sorry, H. Yeah, so it'll be x squared h. Is that cool? So do you notice? Well, we haven't written this one yet, not yet. But I can see that I know I want to get rid of h. I already know I do because it says write it as a function of x. So whatever this formula is, it's got to have h's in it. How the hell do I do the surface area of this thing? Well, you can kind of think of it. How many sides are going to have this area here of this side? How many sides will have this area? Four. Four. Okay, so this is four. And of course, what is that area of that of that side? Four x h. H x. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Speaking is hard. Plus, I got two more sides, the top and the bottom. And of course, what are the, oh shit and a half. I got a bunch of ants in my box, sorry. What is the area of those? I got two of those. X squared. X squared, I like it. So what do I need to do then with this equation? What do I need to do? The same thing we did with the last two problems. Get what letter variable. do I want to? Yeah, solve for what? Uh, uh, probably H. <laughs> yeah, because what do I want to get rid of here? I want to get rid of H because it wants me to have a volume of X or exactly. as a function of X. So whatever I want to get rid of, I solve this one for it. I always think of invasion of the body snatchers because I'm weird. But I want to go in and, and subtly replace H with something to do with X. So if I solve this for H, I can replace this with what else it's known as, right? So if I just brute force solve this for H, I'm going to subtract 2X squared and divide by 4X. Now I could divide everything by 2. I don't really care that much. You guys with me a little bit? It's the exact same thing we did on the first two. That's kind of the nice thing about looking tell me, ask me. Solve the tell me for the letter you want to get rid of, replace it in the ask me so it goes away, and then do the shit they want you to do after that. So now I can put this thing. Let me now I just can't let go of it. I have to divide everything by two. Is that all right? 500. You can do more than that, but I'm just going to do this. And then you can put this pen. Sorry, I gotta admonish my pen in there. So I get volume is x squared times 500 minus x squared over 2x. And then of course you guys can maybe see what else happens there. So I can, I can kill one of these x's here, right? And then you get something that's not quadratic, so I wouldn't really ask you to do more with this thing. It's just a practice problem. All right, how are you guys feeling about that? I mean, it should feel familiar, some of it, but some of it is definitely different. We're not used to a multi-layer setup for something, but it's not that difficult. You can normally tell, oh, this piece is what they're telling me, and this piece is what they're asking me. All right, then, then I can focus all my attention on the tell me, get it completely set up, and then I can focus all my attention on the ask me and get that completely set up, and then see how they interact. Okay, all right. I, I don't know, if anybody tried the last few problems on section 5.1, does it seem like that will help at all? Yes. If you tried them, some I think I think a couple of these are a lot like some of the problems you have to do in five one. So they will help directly. But just the general idea. I'm sorry. Does anyone else still need this chicken scratch? No. Like no, Jeff. We did not need that in the first place. I understand. All right. Um. Okay. So now I want to do a little bit out of the next section. Where's my book? There you are. I want to show you, all right, I want, to, I want you guys to agree with me on this. Section 5.2 has very little in it that's new, 
except for this right here. We talked a little bit about end behavior. Get out of here. <laughs> so I want to focus on that for right now because the rest of this section, please tell me this sounds familiar. Maybe we have to um, refresh this, but the degree of a polynomial, does that sound familiar? The leading coefficient, right? So those are very intermediate algebra level stuff. But if it's been a while, I understand needing a refresher. Um, so I want to focus on, well, let's do maybe, let's do a couple of those real quick. Um, and then I want to focus on um, the end behavior. Yeah, so let's first do degree stuff. Let me find a good one. Yeah, we can just do it wherever. Let's see. Do, do, do. Here we go. Perfect. So does anyone know what the degree of this F function is? Three. Yeah. Why? It's the highest degree in it. Yeah, that's the highest degree I see. So the degree of this term, what's the degree of this term right here? Oh, shit. <laughs> the three, what's the degree of that term? What does degree mean? Oh, I got chat. No, good try. Degree is the Why? largest exponent in a polynomial, right? So the degree of a polynomial is the largest degree that we see. So why is the degree of this one three? Because that's the largest exponent. Because that's how many variables are in it. So the degree of a term counts the number of variables in it. So I see three x's. That's a third degree. I see two x's. That's the second degree. What's the degree of this first dude? You can do it. Zero with. Zero with degree. No? All right. I just love saying zero with. It's just neat. So then, uh, you know, the rest of these are simple then once you see that. And, and what's missing, what I wish they did, let me make this more interesting. So if I had a function like this, it's not even, a, if I had this polynomial, um, What's the degree of that polynomial? Five. Good. Sorry. I'm so excitable. I'm sorry. The highest degree term I see has five total letters. So the degree is not the power. The degree is the total number of letters. So that term is a fifth degree. That term is third degree. That term is first degree. So the whole polynomial is fifth degree. You guys with me? Just to show you the whole story, because they don't really go far enough to show you the whole story. Okay, uh, let's see. And of course, what's the leading term in this F function? What's the leading term? The leading coefficient, sorry. Negative four. Yes, it's just the, 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 term, the leading coefficient is the one that's in front of the highest degree term. So what's the leading coefficient of the one I made up over here? Negative four. Yeah, negative four again. It's, the, it's just the number in front of the highest degree term. That's all it is. So that's old news. That's some old shit. That's simple stuff. It's just got to take a second to remember how it works. So that is basic stuff. All right, let me clear all that. So let's go back. I want to focus on end behavior. And I, I kind of love the fact that they bring, oh, where did it go? I saw some end behavior. Where were you? Here we go. All right. So we want to get used to these symbols down here because this is going to be huge in calculus. Has anyone ever seen these symbols at the bottom of the, of the graphs? These, these guys down here. Yeah, I've seen them before. How do you read this? Uh, generally, you kind of read it like as x approaches, right? Or just yes. approaches, right. basically. So as x approaches negative infinity. So what's the way like a, like a normal human would say it? As x gets really big negative. So as I go this way, the outputs go to positive infinity, right? 
And as X approaches positive infinity, so as I let my X inputs get big, the outputs approach positive infinity. Let me stop for a minute. So this is a very highly technical way of saying it goes up in both directions. <laughs> All right. right? So do you see why it's called end behavior? It doesn't give a shit what's happening in the middle. All it cares about is when X gets really, really big negative, what's it doing? When X gets really, really big positive, what's it doing? The middle, it could be going crazy. It depends on what the function is. So odd uh, powers, every single thing that's to an odd power, every power function has an odd power, is going to look like this when they're positive. So as X goes to negative infinity, the outputs get really big negative. So that's what that first line says. You guys okay out there? And as X gets really big positive, the outputs get really big positive. Okay, so of course, we already know what happens in that first column. I'm gonna clear all my chicken scratch. Gone. If I make the, co the coefficient negative, of course, it's gonna open down, which means all my outputs now go to negative infinity if it's even. Right, for an even power, it's gonna to go to negative infinity. If it's not power, it's just the flip of this dude, right? It just flips it. We know that from transformations. So if I had, now watch this. Jeff, you gotta, you want me something to happen? You gotta do this, okay, there. If I have, um, what will that look like? What will the end behavior be? On this side, where will it be? So as X goes to negative infinity, what does the outputs do? What go does the output? Yeah, they go to infinity, because it's gonna be the reverse of this, because it's negative. So it's gonna be here, and over here it's gonna be Let me stop for a minute. So what if I had, what if I had this? What will that end behavior be? Can you read that? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I assume it's a 48, right? Yes. Um, well, since it's even and A in this case would be positive, then it would, as X approaches negative infinity, then F of X would approach infinity. And the same would happen as X approaches just normal infinity. I like it. So if you want to make it technical, as X gets really big negative, Y gets big positive. As X gets big positive, Y also still gets big positive because it's, even power. It's going to go up, up. And something I, I think I threw in the last time we talked, I brought, I brought up end behavior very quickly. What's really neat, let me see, I got to clear some of this away. Has everybody got what they want from these? Probably more than you wanted. So I'm going to clear them. Go on. All right. If I had a function like this, if I had a million dollars, what would the end behavior be? Oh, I just lost somebody. Somebody's shouting at me. If the range is restricted, would it approach the largest number in the range? Oh, very interesting question. Um, that would not be a polynomial. So one thing you notice about polynomial functions, they go to infinity or negative infinity eventually in both directions. They won't have any horizontal asymptotes. You guys with me? If I saw a graph that looked like this, that is not polynomial. 
that is probably a rational function. It probably is something like x squared plus two over uh, whatever, x squared minus seven. It would actually be more like that. Yeah, sure, I like it. And we're gonna study those eventually, just not, not yet. But one thing to notice about polynomials, they always go infinite, either negative infinite eventually or positive infinite eventually, right, on each side. The middle might wobble if I put, so this guy, it's gonna definitely have a wobbly middle. That is a very strange phrase. So I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's, I know what it's gonna do at the ends. Can anybody tell me what this guy's end behavior will be? As what is approaches the, negative infinity, f of x equals negative infinity. And yeah, and to me, I always like to start with a picture. So, yeah, you're doing the right thing because what are you looking at? You're looking at the negative even. Because that's the largest power. Yeah. So think about it. I really want this to make sense. Why would the end behavior only be determined by the largest degree term? Because that's the one that's going to matter when X gets freaking huge. Freaking huge. So huge. So X to the seventh is pretty damn big, but then X to the eighth is, you know, another factor bigger than that. So when you're doing a million to the seventh versus a million to the eighth, this ain't shit, right? So this guy rules the day when X gets big. And what is N behavior all about? Letting X get big. So this, this is really kind of nice. I just have to find the highest degree and that tells me what the end behavior is. It's an even function, so it's gonna be either up or down. And since it's a negative, it's gonna be down, down. And then you can see, I always like to draw the picture first and then you can go, okay, as X goes to negative infinity, F of X goes to negative infinity. And as X goes to infinity, F of X goes to negative infinity. It just goes to negative infinity, both sides. In the middle, it's gonna do weird shit, weird shit. So let's do this, let's try this. Let's actually graph this thing and then I think I'm gonna, Oh, good. We got time. I think I'm going to do, all right, let me think. I got to think about what I'm going to do next, but let's, let's, let's pull up the calculators. Have you guys got this written down somewhere? All right. I'm going to pull up the calculator. Stop share. I'm really hoping somebody wrote that down. Cause I did not. Oh, where's my calculator? There you are, okay. There you go, buddy. Open, says me, thank you. All right, there we go. All right, let me share this. Now somebody please read me off the function that somebody wrote down. It's x to the seventh power minus three x to the eighth plus 2x to the fifth. Oh shit, okay, thank God. So I'm not gonna futz around with this thing. Let's do zoom. What's a really good thing to do when you just have no idea? Zoom. You guys remember, I think I talked about this. zoom fit, yeah. So let's see what this thing does to it. There we go. That kind of sucks a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I want to see more stuff in here. So let me, zoom fit's not a bad place to start, but it definitely goes down too far. Look at that Y min. Dude, what are you thinking? Let's go, just go down to 500. Why not? Let's see what that does. Still not good enough. All right. Is somebody with me? I'm just adjusting the window a little bit. So I'm going to go. Let's just make this negative 50. And I don't know if you guys also noticed that my X didn't need to be nearly as wide. Let's see what this does. Oh, see, look, something interesting. <laughs> Sorry. Now let me, I, I should have shown you something else. Let's, let's, all right, all right. 
So see, I, I want to look a little bit. Yeah, I'll keep doing this, but there's another thing I want to show you. I want to look up a little bit. So I want Y max to be, let's make Y max um, 10. Yeah. I like it. And then Y, and let's make Y min a little bit less, negative 20. Let's see what happens with that. All right, see, now watch. Here's what I'm going to do. All right. So you got to get kind of used to fits, not a bad idea. Then you have to adjust the window a little bit, right? And now here's one of my favorite things. This is like CSI, the imaginary enhance. Zoom box is such a cool ass thing. If I move the cursor, I can hit enter and that's now a corner of a box. So if I move up and over, it's gonna zoom in on the area I've captured. And now look at that. I see some neat shit happening. Maybe? Just me. Just you, Jeff. All right. Anyway, okay, I'll stop playing around. So so now we can see that there is a little bit of wobble in here, but not very much. Right? Okay. All right. I don't know if you guys are bored. Are you guys with me? You got to play with those calculators. You really, really do. So even a problem that doesn't say use it, I would still use it if I were you to check my answer and just to see what things look like. Cool trick. Thank you, Jasper. I'm sorry. I called you up. Somebody sent me a message. I'm sorry. Uh, let me see. What else was I going to show you? Oh, somebody's chatting at me again. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. That's enough. Stop. So let's go back to the book. Let me see. So that is end behavior. Let's try a couple problems out from the homework real quick. Oh, wait, 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 what's this? Yeah, dude. So here's, well, ah, screw this. Let me see. Yeah, let me show you this real quick. You can, you guys can look at this easy enough. This is, this is a nice few examples it has. So there's the function. I know what the end behavior is going to be because the largest term, the largest degree term is a fourth power. It's an uh, uh, even and it's positive. So it should go up and up. And these other little terms give it that weird little wobble here. I love it. I love it. And so you can look at some other examples. That one's really nifty looking. It looks like, it looks like a really low res jaws coming up. Donna, donna. Anyway, right? Or it's like the carp that could. I don't know. It's not really a shark. And then you got this. This one is really neat to me. I can't. I think I, there's so much wobbly shit happening here. It's kind of neat. Uh, I kind of want to graph this and then zoom in on this. And I'm not going to right now. I'll do it when you guys go away. Maybe you guys could try it too. Anyway. And then this one's a little less interesting. Uh, why does it make sense? How many turning points does it have? Two. It's got two turning points. And why does that make sense? Because it can have at most one less than the highest degree. So be really careful. The official rule is at most one less than this. Right? How many turning points does X cubed itself have? If you just graph F X cubed, how many turning points does it have? What does X cubed look like? Think about it. Yeah. How many turning points? Careful. Does it have a turning point? I love you guys. So let's draw it. So if I graph an X cubed, it comes up and it goes, I feel like turning on. No, I don't. Jackass. Zero turning points. Zero. Right? You guys with me? Why is that okay? Because it can have at most one less than the power. So zero is fine. Okay, all right. No reaction, I like it. That's enough of that. Oh shit, I gotta undo that. Clear, go away. Uh, let's see, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 whatever. Oh, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. So let me let me talk about this. Um, no, screw this shit. Looking at this problem, giraffe. Okay, thank you. 
looking at this problem, can somebody tell me what the end behavior is just looking at this? What's well, kind of wrong with what I'm asking, but you can still do it. You don't have to do as much work as they say. This is bullshit. Screw them. What do I need to know to be able to determine the end behavior? Why can we determine the end behavior of this easily, but not so much this? You have to factor it out and figure out the larger one, right? Yeah, one way to do it is to do a lot of work that is completely unnecessary. But I don't blame you for believing you have to do that. You definitely don't. Can you just tell what the highest power would be? Can you just tell? Yeah, you'd have if x you squared did. times x squared, which would be x to the fourth, x right? x to the fourth. The highest power, if you did do all the work, would be negative 3x to the fourth. That would be the highest term, right? So do I actually have to multiply this shit out? No, I don't. In fact, why is this so much better to have? Because what are the x-intercepts? One and negative four. Negative one, four. One, one, sorry. one zero, negative and negative four, four, zero. And zero, there we go. Kick ass. Now let me tell you, so, so I want you to realize something. The highest degree of this is four, right? The fundamental theorem of algebra says that it must have that many zeros, and it does. It just happens to have two zeros. So it has a one, has a negative four, a zero, and a zero. So it has four total places where the output is zero. So I don't know if you guys remember the, the fundamental theorem of algebra, the if Toa, <laughs> does that sound familiar to anybody? If not, it's it's okay. Um, let me let me write some. Somebody's chatting at me. Nope. Okay, thank you. Um, let me write a little bit, and then and then maybe that's it. Maybe we stop. Um, so the fundamental theorem of algebra basically says if you have a polynomial function where the highest power is k, then if it's equal to zero, it must have k solutions. It must have that many solutions. It has to. So when you solve a problem like x cubed plus eight equals zero, there has to be three solutions. There has to be. Some of them might be repeats possibly. Some of them might be like here, this problem, had zero twice. Is that all right? At zero, zero, one, and negative four. So it does have four total. It just had one that repeated. In fact, we call that multiplicity two. Depending on your teacher, you might have heard that word before. It's also a very cool movie with, uh, what's his name? I forgot his name. I'm going to stop. All right. So right here, if you do this, how many answers do you get? You get one. Did you, did you completely solve this? Did you completely solve this if you get one answer? How many are you supposed to get? Is negative three. two answer it three times? Nope, it doesn't because it's not X cubed it's not uh what do you call it it's not x cubed equals zero or something right i do get one answer it's not multiplicity three so how do i get the other answers well the thing i should have done is i should have factored this thing There's my negative two, right? And then this one, I've got to use quadratic formula and get the other two answers. Do you guys see that? Okay, okay. And real quick, the reason, if this would have been x cubed equals zero, that would have been a, uh, uh, something that's repeated three times, so just like this one. Okay, I like it. So this one, I lost the weird answers I would get from quadratic formula. 
so that's a very good uh, general idea. It's, it's really, really specific. It must be this many solutions. It has to be. So some of them could be complex, some of them can be real, and some of them can be repeated. I like it. So here's a kind of a side note to what you were talking about. If I have this problem, what's the answer? You can do it. You can do it. Two. How about make that zero? Two. How many times does it show up? Three times. So two, two, two. So it's got a multiplicity three answer. Because something was cubed being equal to zero, I got that same answer three times. All right, that might be a good place to stop. You guys look about as tired as I felt earlier. Now I'm awake. This is weird. My adrenaline finally kicked in just in time to end the class, <laughs> all right. So guys, uh, we have a quiz on, uh, it's a Monday, I think, right? Let's see, what is today? Yes, we have a quiz on Monday. It's gonna be chapter four, uh, five one and five two. So originally it was supposed to go up to five four and we just sort of pushed it back a couple sections, which is fine. We can catch up easy. Yeah. I'm not going to rush us, so don't worry. Um, is everybody with me on that? And I'm going to do this next quiz a little bit easier. Uh, let me see. So I might have to rethink the homework. If somebody can email me right now and say, hey, Jeff, look at the chapter five due dates. So I can adjust those. And, and do that anytime you feel like it. I can always say no. But I will sometimes forget to go change the due dates. Why? Because I've been teaching for 20 some odd years and this is the only year I've ever had to freaking worry about this shit. So um, it's not part of my routine. So feel free to reach out and say, Did you, do you want that due date to still be there? And I'll go either, hell yeah, too damn bad, do it. Or I'll go, oh shit, let me go change it. Right? So somebody shoot me an email right now and just say, look at the five, the chapter five due dates. Um, very quickly. The quiz, I'm going to do it a little differently. So let me just lay this out real quick. I just did it today with my stats class and it went really well. I have a way that I can set a timer on it so that you guys can do it. And I, and I, I made the quiz they took, I made it due tomorrow morning so they could do it anytime. But the minute they opened it, they had an hour and something to do it and turn it in. So I'm going to do the same thing with you guys. Um, it's just because because doing it over Zoom is 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 annoying and uncomfortable. <laughs> I think you might agree with me on that. Uh, the final will still be over Zoom, but um, I think we can do the quizzes that way, and then we don't have to lose so much time lecture time uh, set aside for quizzes. Um, so I like that better. So just to warn you guys, the next quiz is going to work that way. Uh, so yeah, I'll go change the chapter five uh, due dates. I'll take a look at those. Okay, we're, we're done. So let me know if you have any questions. You can hang out, ask questions, or you can head out. Thank you. You're welcome. Is the quiz just on chapter four? Or no, is quiz is on chapter four, section five one, section five two. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. You guys all right out there? Yeah, I'll see, see you. you. Thanks for class. All right. Anytime. Oh, uh, Brian just got back in and we're leaving. Brian, you might no. want to watch. The, I talked about how the next quiz is going to work. Um, no, yeah, I, w I was here the entire the entire thing. But, oh, um, you were? Yeah, I was going to ask you if you're going to upload the, this video on YouTube again. Yes. Okay, sweet. Later. Right,